Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly uh, write your citations and references in APA 7th edition format. Now, you may realize that there are lots of reference generators across the internet, uh, but I strongly advise against using those because I have never found one that actually produces references in the correct format without any mistakes. Um, so depending on your purpose and what you're writing the references for, that could be very important. You want to make sure that you're formatting correctly. Um, so if you watch the rest of this video, you, I will show you exactly how to do that and you won't have to rely on those generators. So first I want to talk about what is a citation and what is a reference. So citations are in text and they're there to show and acknowledge where you got the information that you are discussing. Um, so you use in-text citations, whether it is a direct quotation or you have paraphrased the information and wrote it in your own words. So in either case, you still need to acknowledge where you got the information, even if you wrote it in your own words. Um, so you would include in-text citations like we see in the top of our picture here that would include the last name and date and if it's a direct quotation then you would also include the page number. So on the next slide I'll show you exactly how to format that. Um, then in your reference list all the way at the end of your writing, so you've finished your writing after that, then you have a list of references which are all of the entries showing all of the information for the different sources that you used in writing whatever, in writing your paper or your article or whatever it is. Um, so importantly, all of your sources should be both in text cited and included in your reference list. So if you refer to it in text, I should be able to then go look at the reference list to find all of the information for that source. And if you include a source on your reference list, I should be able to see where in your paper you use that information. So any source that you use should be cited in text and referenced in your reference list at the very end. So formatting your in-text citations. So it's slightly different depending on whether it's a direct quotation or whether you paraphrased it and put the information in your own words. So if you paraphrased it and it is not a quotation, then you would put author last name, comma, year of publication in parentheses at the end of that sentence. So I gave you an example there so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so it'd be write your paraphrase sentence here and end with the reference. And so you'd put the author last name and the year in parentheses and then close with the period. Um, so that is how most of your in-text citations should look uh, because although sometimes you do need to include a quotation to really capture the meaning of uh, what, you're, what you're trying to convey, the way, but you should only be quoting when if you put it in your own words, you would lose the original meaning. Um, so in all other cases, put it in your own words. It is bad practice to quote everything. I've had students turn in papers where there are large amounts of quotations included, and that is not good practice because we should always be paraphrasing whenever it is possible to paraphrase and still get the point across. Um, but in the rare case, where paraphrasing would lose the meaning and there's absolutely no other way to state it, then you would include a quotation. And so your in-text citation would look exactly the same, but in this case, you would include the page number where you got that quotation from. So in parentheses, in parentheses it would be author last name, year of publication, and then the page number. If it was from only one page, then it would just be P period page number. If it was from multiple pages, then it would be PP period, and then the range of pages. So I gave you an example there. So Foster 2020, page 17, or Foster 2020, page 17 through 18, if it was a quotation that spanned more than one page. So below that, you'll see an example uh, where I said, write your quotation here and end with the reference. So we have the open and closed parentheses, or not the parentheses, I'm sorry, the quotations. And then after that, you have in parentheses, author last name, year, and then page number, and then close with the period after your in-text citation. All right, for formatting references, 
Here I included just some basic rules of how to format your references list. Um, there's more than this uh, if you are citing other types of sources than what I'm going to talk about here. Um, and the next two slides I'll go over specifically and give examples about citing academic journal articles and websites. Um, and so if, but if you're going to do any other kind of sources, you might want to look into uh, the other guidelines for that. But these are the basic rules that will get you started on the right path here. Um, so all lines after the first line of each entry are indented. So let's say you have an entry into your references list that's three lines long. The first line will be flush to the left side, and then the second and third lines would be indented. All authors are written as last name, comma, and then the first initial and middle initial if one is given. So I gave an example here um, where let's just use my name, uh, Veronica Foster, then it would be Foster comma V period would be how you'd present my name. Now let's say in the publication, I included my middle name or my middle initial, uh, then it would be Veronica Carey Foster, and then that would be written as Foster comma V period C period. So first initial and then middle initial. Um, when you are writing your references, you might have sources that have many authors. You are going to list all of the authors up to 20. So if there's 21 authors, you don't have to list all 21, uh, but all authors up to 20 and then separate each one by a comma. Now this is an update from the sixth edition APA formatting where you only had to list up to six authors, uh, but they have changed that now for seventh edition, so you need to list up to 20. Um, no matter how many you list, if you have more than one, then you're going to put an ampersand before the last author. So you might have only two authors and you would have an ampersand or you could have 20 authors and you'd put an ampersand before the name of the last author. Then you're going to alphabetize your whole list of references by the last name of the first author. So the first word of all of your entries is the last name of the first author. So you are just alphabetizing by that first word of each entry. For titles of books, chapters, articles, reports, and web pages, you are capitalizing only the first letter of the title. So you are not capitalizing every word of the title, only the first letter and the first word of the title. Um, and then we italicize the titles of longer works like books. So if you are citing a textbook, for example, then you will italicize the title of the textbook. Uh, but we do not italicize titles of shorter works like journal articles or websites. All right, so some specifics. So I'm purposely going over uh, articles in academic journals and web pages because those are going to be the most commonly cited sources that you're probably going to use in whatever it is that you are writing. Um, so for academic journals, you will write the full name of the journal out and italicize it. Okay, this is an update from previous versions of APA because you used to be able to abbreviate journal names, uh, but now you need to write out the full entire name of the journal and italicize it. You also capitalize the major words of the whole title of the journal. Now, this is separate, this is different from the title of the article. So only the first word of the article title is capitalized but all of the major words in the title of the journal that the article came from is capitalized. Okay, so I gave you here below, you can see it says author last name, uh, comma, author first and middle initial, just like we went over on the last slide, and then the year in parentheses, period, and then the title of the article, it's not italicized and only the first word is capitalized. And then the title of the journal, which is italicized and where um, all the major words in the title of the journal are also italicized. And then I just noticed where it says volume number, that should also be italicized. So make note, um, you go title of journal, comma, volume number, volume number should be italicized. Then in parentheses, issue number, comma, and then the pages, that the article is found within the journal, period. 
And then you include the DOI. So the DOI is written as https colon slash slash doi.org slash, and then whatever is the series of numbers that is the DOI for that journal article. So I gave you an example. So foster comma V period, and then ampersand, because you always put that in before the last author, and then Bernstein comma J period, and then the year is 2021 in parentheses, period. And then the title of the article, where only the first letter is capitalized, and then period. And then the name of the journal, in, that is each of the major words are capitalized and the whole thing is italicized. So Journal of Higher Education, Theory and Practice, comma. Then the volume number, which is also italicized. Then the issue number, in parentheses, not italicized, comma, and then the pages. So for this article, it was 104 to 114, period, and then the DOI. So it's always going to have that first part, the HTTPS colon slash slash DOI.org slash, and then whatever follows is the unique part that represents that journal article. Okay, for websites, there are two ways to do it, depending on whether it is a website that was written by an individual author and the author is listed there, or if it's written by an organization or a group. So I gave you both examples. So for a website, you're gonna go author last name, comma, author first and middle initial, just like everything else. And then in parentheses, we don't just do the year, we do year, comma, and the month and date that that web page was published and then period, and then the title of the page where the title of the page is italicized and only the first word is capitalized, period. Then the site name, period. And then you paste the URL where you found this on the internet. So I gave you an example there where it says Shoen S, that's the author, then in parentheses, 2021, August 26, that was the date of publication. Then the title of the page, which was the title of the article that I read, uh, where you capitalize only the first word and that whole title is italicized. Then the site name, which in this case was Sleep Foundation, because that was the organization where it was published. And then I pasted the URL for the website. Now, in a lot of cases, you might read something that you want to reference, but there isn't an author listed because it might've been written by an organization. So I gave you an example here where it was an article that was published by Mayo Clinic as an organization with no individual author that was listed or as being responsible. Um, so in that case, you do it exactly the same way as if you do have an author, but in that case, you would put the name of the organization in place of the author's name. So in this case, it's just simply Mayo Clinic, period, and then the rest of the reference is exactly the same as you would do if you had a full author's name. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video. Bye.